And welcome um, to Chakra 6 and 7, our last of our Chakra classes. So a little bit of a different format today. So I'm going to share a little bit about Chakra, Chakra 6. Um, and then we're going to go through a practice and we're going to start with going through all of the chakras. So we're going to build up, we're going to go from the first chakra all the way up and then really focus and highlight on Chakra 6 and 7. And then the last of our class will, will be just the, the in restorative poses, chakra seven, um, and then a beautiful meditation that you guys can just chill in. So, um, so the sixth chakra is really all about vision and illumination. So it's that that perception, that seer that seeing of truth, that seeing of purpose, sort of all of those things that we've talked about coming coming in through how we live um, our lives. And <clears throat> there was, this book here is just an amazing book. It's Chakra Yoga, um, Amazon, not that much, beautiful illustrations, beautiful breathing, beautiful meditations. Um, and they, they share in this, and, and it's um, Endeo Judith. They, she shares that it relates to yoga in the form with the sixth chakra, that the goal of yoga is to cultivate a state of consciousness in which the mind is no longer distracted, agitated, or fluctuating, but is calm clear, present, and still. And that's that connection, that seer of the sixth chakra, which in Sanskrit is Agna. Um, and it's to both perceive and to command. So you're perceiving things, but yet having that action to share as well. The color is um, indigo and um, is really that space, that third eye, you know, so you can think of your intuition, your third eye, you probably heard heard that a lot. <clears throat> so our essential oils, and I have a little spray here, you guys, I don't know if you can smell it in the back, is um, lavender. Um, if you have any essential oils at home to spray, or patchouli, peppermint, frankincense, which is funny, these are all of my favorite essential oils. <laughs> these are all of my favorite essential oils. Um, yeah, so that is the that is the sixth chakra. It's your it's your vision, it's your intuition. Um, so we're gonna start with some seated pranayama. So let me grab a bolster or a meditation pillow, whatever feels good with you, or maybe just a blanket. Um, our third chakra, um, the element is light. So we'll infuse a lot of that throughout throughout the class today. And in, in connection, um, with yoga, in yoga practice, it's eye movements and visualizations. Um, and then some, some a little bit as well with, with uh, connecting on any kind of pressure on that third eye as well. So great. Anything, anybody else when I know you've been studying some on the six, on the chakras, anything else? I mean, and we'll get into it more as we go through. But. No, I keep learning more from you. Yeah, That's well, great. I'm a very beginner. So, and I really like to think of the chakras as more, there's lots of things you can get into, gems and foods and, but I, I just really, to me, it's more of a way we live our life and what, what connects with the, the sixth chakra. Um, cause for me, like food is a science cause I'm a dietitian, not a chakra thing, but there's so much more to, to dive into. So, so just find, um, a comfortable seat, whether you're, you're watching this work to sort of block out all of those distractions. And just find that natural breath. 
the natural inhale and exhale through the nose. One of the biggest themes of the sixth chakra is also just being in the present, being here and now, and letting your whole being, especially your mind, come to this present moment and this present space. Just start to bring your awareness to your sit bones. Just feeling your sacrum heavy. Start to feel that density in the bones sort of sinking into the mat. See the color red. Then find a nice big inhale. We're going to bring our arms up overhead. Nice. And then exhale all the way through heart center. And just continuing that flow movement with your own breath. Inhaling up and exhaling all the way through heart center. And our next inhale, we're gonna bring our arms up and then let our knees come up too. Right, nice big inhale here. And then this time we're gonna exhale, letting our knees drop and our hands drop. We're gonna do that a little bit faster, exhaling through our mouth. So inhaling up, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhale, inhaling. Just go at your own pace. Knees come up, hands come up, and then releasing it all down. And last one. Nice, and just let the palms rest, palms facing up. And just notice any sensations, any vibrations. And then moving that awareness to our navel, really even below our navel, like our sacral region. So and seeing the color yellow, starting to think about that fluidity and that movement of our second chakra. Place our hands on our knees, nice big inhale, filling our heart, lifting up, shoulders back, and then exhaling round. So flowing with the breath on each inhale, lifting, and each exhaling round. So moving the spine, so remember that second chakra is all about the movement, the action, like what feels good. You've moved up from the foundation and stability of your first chakra into pleasure, what, what, enjoying life, moving, doing, really connect, connected with air and flow. And then bringing it all the way back towards center. And let's go ahead and take our fingertips behind and switch the cross of the right. And go ahead and place your hand on your solar plexus region. So moving the awareness up, seeing the color yellow, so orange for that solar for the um, for the second chakra and the color yellow for our third chakra, that heat, that power, and hands on our knees, moving from that area, from the navel, almost like we're rounding our ribs all the way through a wine barrel. 
trying to touch each side. And connecting to with our breath too. It sort of reminds me of like a belly dancing. Movement. So our purpose and our will. And then slowly bringing it all the way back towards center. So that length in the spine. And that awareness of our solar plexus region again, and then feeling it move in the opposite direction. Feel free to just close your eyes and imagine the rib cages going in all directions, circling around. And then slowly winding it all the way back towards center. And finding that stillness in the spine and feeling that energy moving all the way up to our heart center. So seeing the color green, our fourth chakra. All about our love and connection. Nice big inhale. Let's bring our arms up. And then exhale, bringing our hands right on our shoulders. We're going to inhale here and then exhale over to the right. Inhale. So it's more of a forced exhale through the nose. Go as fast or slow. It feels good to you. If you feel lightheaded, just find your natural breath. And slowly bring it into slow motion and all the way back towards center, keeping that tall spine. Nice big inhale and exhaling to the opposite side. So we're twisting from the navel really all the way up into the chest. slowing it down. Bringing it all the way to center, just finding that tall spine and your natural breath. You may feel some vibrations or sensations throughout the body. And our fourth chakra is that connection of our lower chakras to our upper chakras, our fifth and our sixth and our seventh chakras, our physical body into our spiritual body. So moving that awareness into our throat. Seeing the color blue. And taking or interlacing our fingers and taking them underneath our throat. Elbows up, nice big inhale here. We're going to exhale out the mouth as we drop the elbows and make a sound through our mouth. So inhaling here, exhaling, inhaling. Last one. Nice. Just let the palms rest. Natural breath. Moving our awareness 
to our third eye, our intuition, our vision, and seeing the color purple or indigo. Maybe even take a moment and just touch, gently touch the space of your sixth chakra, the third eye. Bringing our hands together just a few inches in front of us, a few inches apart, so closing our eyes, feeling that energy in that space. And then we're going to inhale and open our eyes wide, taking in all the light, all the colors, all the smiling faces. <laughs> and then exhaling, closing our hands, closing our eyes, inhaling. Opening our eyes wide, taking in all of those sensations, exhaling, close. But it looks like you're letting all the light in, like a clear vision, like you can see everything so perfectly, exhaling as you close. And we'll end with our hands at heart center. Eyes closed. And just start to bring your awareness to the area above your head, even like the crown of your head all the way above and beyond. And imagine a beautiful white light, our crown chakra connected to our higher power. Free of all attachments, free of all suffering. A nice big inhale, just bringing our hands overhead right above our head. And then exhaling, opening our arms wide. Inhaling. And exhaling. Eyes can be open or closed. So opening up to all that it's around us. And then bringing our hands back above and all the way down to heart center. Feeling that namaste, all that is good in me, sees all that is good in you. Or tohi, which is wellness or peace, or really just a life in balance, finding when we need to go fast and when we need to go slow. And then releasing our hands all the way down. Uh, and let's go ahead and rub our hands together. We watch our face and our hair, our crown chakra connected, maybe that little head massage even. And then extending our arms behind and our legs out, just whoo, feeling all that blood flow in our legs, whoo, and feeling a little shake. I don't know. It's going to be hard to move after that. Let's get straight into Shavasana. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Oh, let those knees breathe, right? We've been crossed for a while. Great. And go ahead and turn all the way over onto our hands and our knees. And you know, you know how yoga was created, right? I think I'm sure most of you have heard this story. Is there's a couple different stories, but that um all of you know the sages and the monks would need to meditate for hours hours at a time and so their body started getting stiff and tight and achy and so they looked into the forest and they mimicked the movements of the animals and they created yoga 
And the goal of yoga was just to allow their bodies to be able to sit in meditation for long periods of time. Because before, like their knees would be aching, right? Their back could be aching, and so they would get distracted. So, so yeah, so so that's why when you see the yoga, it's a lot of animal, you know, animal poses. They looked at, saw the eagle. They saw the, they saw the, I don't know, cat. So let's go ahead and bring our hands in front of us just a few inches above our shoulders, knees back behind our hips, and turn our toes under. Really root down into our thumb, our first finger. And then lifting the knees, sort of feel a hover here, right? And then slowly starting to lift up and all the way back to down dog. And here, this is our second chakra. So we're really moving our legs and our knees and our hips. So feel a flow in this down dog. So feeling what feels good to you. We really hit that first chakra with our stability of our, our seat and our tall spine. So feeling that flow and that movement back and forth with your breath. Keep on moving, keep on moving. And then nice and slow, let's start to walk the feet towards the hands or the hands towards the feet, either one. Belly on the thighs, really rooting down to the feet and then slowly start to come all the way up towards standing. Nice big inhale, bringing our arms all the way up and exhaling our hands all the way up heart center. Great, just do that a few more times with your breath, just moving through the arms, the shoulders, Connecting with the breath, so that mind-body connection. And then our next time we're bringing our hands all the way up, interlace our fingers, and we're gonna start to bring our hands all the way over towards the right. Right, really rooting down through that left leg. Feel that space in the side body. Inhaling all the way up towards center. Exhaling to the opposite side. Great. Inhaling all the way up. Exhaling, soften our knees. Bellies all the way down towards our thighs. Releasing our head. Relax it all the way down. Nice. We're going to just shake it out. Softening our knees. Bring our right leg back. And let's take that low lunge, so modified sun salutation. Great, toe turned on our nice big inhale, floating it all the way up. Nice, exhaling down. Great, bring our front leg back. So booty up or down, your choice. Strong arms, elbows straight back as we lower down. Great, releasing our toes. Feel like you're pulling that mat back towards you, lifting our heart, shoulder down and back. Exhaling down. Turning our toes under, pressing into the hands, lifting all the way up. Knees can be down, and then just find your down dog. Or if cat cow feels better, find your cat cow. From here, wherever you're at, connect with your breath. Really rooting through the thumb, the first fingers, and our thighs reaching back, long spine. Root through that left foot. Nice big inhale. Take the right foot up. You can be on your knee here. That feels better. Take it all the way through. So you can always take that knee down and take the leg all the way up. Nice big inhale. Reaching back, side ribs engaged, heart floats up, exhaling down. Great, turning that back toe under, press into the front foot, bring it all the way up, soften the knees, relax the head. Nice and nice and slow, bring it all the way up. And exhaling. Mm, feel the breath, feel that energy rising all the way up. Feeling a lift all the way up. 
lifting our solar plexus, our heart into our third chakra, root down through our knees. Nice big inhale here. And then exhale, we're like a pull bar here. Okay, so this is a version of camel pose. We're gonna bring our hips forward and then lean back. Like we're curling back just like we do in camel. This is really nice too. Let's bring it all the way back towards center. If you wanna try it on a wall, for those online or here, you don't need to be on your mat. So you just lean against your thighs up against, so feel free to move if you guys wanna try it. You're gonna press your thighs up into the mat and then you're gonna fill the wall and then gently curl back. And you get a little bit more of a back bend. Feel that? And when you're ready, curling it all the way back forward. Nice, rolling out those shoulders. Did that feel different on the wall? What do you think? Nice, you doing? <laughs> nice big inhale, bring our arms up. Exhaling, fold, soften our knees, belly on our thighs. Just let our head dangle. Let our neck dangle. Great, we're gonna root down through our right foot. This is gonna be a challenge, are you ready? Nice big inhale as we're moving our gaze, lifting our left leg up. The karate kick. Whoa! All right, you got it, you got it. Great, right, kick it straight back. Maybe we hold onto our ankle, shoulder releases back, soften the knee. This could be done on a wall too, so you can press your foot into the wall. So maybe we just stay right here, full breath, bringing our knee in towards our leg, lifting through our heart, softening our, our knee. Maybe we hinge forward. Moving our dristi or our gaze. So our dristi is connected to our third eye, our dristi, our focus, our vision. Ooh, sorry. Slowly come all the way up. Sorry about that. Nice. Roll out those ankles. Ooh. -hoo. Is it just me or is it warm in here? <laughs> is it okay? <laughs> this heater, if you have it on, it won't kick off. We're gonna do the same thing. Nice big inhale, arms up. Exhale, rooting down. Really feel the feet rooting down, softening the knees, folding all the way down. Relax the head. Now root down through the opposite foot. We're gonna move our gaze as we lift the opposite leg up. Feel that strength, find that dristy, find that gaze, that point of a soft focus, non-moving. You may just stay right here or feel free to kick the leg back, bringing the knee in towards the midline, Shoulder releases back, thumb and first finger. Lifting all the way up, nice big inhale. As we exhale, maybe we stay here, maybe we release the leg all the way back. Soften that knee. So we're sort of hinging forward from the hip. The knee stays towards the midline. Finding your focus. And when you feel ready, bring it all the way up. Nice, you shake it out. Maybe swing it side to side. I better watch my time. We won't, we won't be here all night. I have no concept of time right now. Okay. Great, let's bring that, um, let's grab both of our, our blocks. 
and bring them in front of our mat and um, those at home and online if you don't have any blocks that's okay you can use a chair um, or we can just you can just go go as far down as you can so we're going to bring our, our right foot forward and our left leg back and our hips are going to be square towards the front of the room, almost like you are in Warrior One. But our legs aren't quite as wide as Warrior One. So really rotating that back hip in and rooting down from that back pinky toe all the way through the back heel. And then go ahead and take the hand on the hip and feel like you're you're pulling that hip back and you even notice how your belly turns as you do that. And then really rooting down from the pinky toe all the way through the outside of that foot, curling back. So with our arms to start with, we can either take our arms to our elbows, we can take our arms and interlace, let our shoulders release back, or we can do a reverse namaste. So do what feels best to you. So feel the shoulders releasing back and that heart lifting up. Feel an openness through the throat. And then just maybe some sign breath. And then putting our head sort of back on straight. We're going to hinge forward. So feel that hip reaching back. This is Parjvat Konasana, side angle pose. So you should feel sort of an intense stretch on the hamstring. Shoulders reaching back as we fold over. And here with our arms, we can keep them right where they're at. Or we can take our arms down to our blocks. And just let our head completely relax. Let our neck completely relax. And we just move the neck side to side. Bring your awareness onto your big toe, the front big toe. And press it into the mat. And feel that inner thigh sort of reaching back. And then press into the pinky toe from the outside of the foot and feel it reaching back. Soften. And then go ahead and bend that knee. And I'm going to give two choices here. You can keep that back leg rooted and just float your arms up into warrior one. Or you can start to lift that back leg, softening the front knee, and we're gonna we can either reach our arms back or reach them forward or to the sides for warrior three folks. So do what's best for your body. Ooh, it's connected to the sixth chakra, our vision, looking ahead. Softening that knee, bring the hands down, the foot down. Root down through the feet and then slowly come up. I go ahead and bring the legs together. Just find that that comfortable space. Make sure you guys can see me OK. Mm -hmm. And just feel the difference between the two sides. I feel a little lopsided. <laughs> Find that breath. Ooh, I'm sorry. It's not working today. I'm not here. Mike, is that killing you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe close the eyes. Just bringing that awareness back into the physical sensations of the body. And then when you're ready, just take the opposite leg forward. Rotating that back hip in. 
and then lifting the heart. So pull like you're really pulling that thigh and that hip bone back. Shoulders down and back, chest lift. So maybe our hands go behind opposite cross of our fingers or our elbows. Maybe we have a reverse namaste or just our fingers clasp. Lifting our heart, full breath. Sign breath. And then head back on straight, really pressing down through that front big toe, reaching that left hip back and starting to hinge the upper body forward. And just pause halfway. And if you choose, you can release the arms. Let the head release down. Let the neck release down. And bring your awareness to your big toe on your front foot. Really pressing it down. And then press into the pinky toe all the way through the outside of the foot. And feel the outside of the, the thigh and the hip reaching back. Soften anything that you don't need to be holding on to. Soften your face, soften your neck, soften your breath. And then just put a slight bend in that front knee. And I'll give you another option here for the warrior too. We can walk our hands out with the blocks in front of you. And then leave your hands down, but you can always just lift the back leg. You can always do that warrior one version too. You can be here or this is almost a harder transition. <laughs> lift the, the arms back and the arms forward. Ooh. And then gently soften the knee, soften the leg. Ooh. Relax the head and the neck. And slowly come all the way up. Thanks. Nice big inhale, bringing your shoulders towards the ears and exhaling all the way back. And bring our feet just a little bit wider than our mat. If you have knee issues, we are going to go into a squat. So just go down as far as you feel comfortable. You can just gently come all the way down to the mat. So hands at heart center. And feel our knees opening wide. And our tailbone starts, tailbone starts to come straight down. And then just pause. We can balance here or place our tailbone on our block. And then feeling the breath, maybe even feeling the pulsations of the pelvic floor. And then when you're ready, bringing it all the way down onto your mat. Nice. We'll just find a comfortable cross in our legs. You can grab a blanket or a pillow, whatever feels good. And then find a dristy or a gaze just on a point in front of you. And a natural breath. And then gently, just with our eyes, not with our head, we're just going to look up and down. Up and down. 
at a pace that feels good for you. And bring our eyes all the way back to center and look left and right. And just this action of looking left and right, looking up and down, looking behind us tells our parasympathetic nervous system we are safe, we are calm. And then bring it all the way back to center, close the eyes, find the breath. And bring that awareness back to your sit bones. And feel the breath floating from the sit bones all the way up to the crown of the head. When you're ready, we're going to come all the way on to our back. So you have your bolster to the side, your blanket to the side, and just hug your knees into your chest. Pressing the knees into the chest, pressing the thighs, pressing all the way down to our ankles. And then placing the feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart. I'm going to give you two options. And yoga is so much about listening to your body. So one option is the windshield wiper. You guys know that. The other option is a bridge pose. So pressing into your feet and rolling up the hips one vertebrae at a time. So our imbalances in our sixth chakra may be seen as learning disabilities, sleeping disorders, or just an imbalance in general in life. And our healing is promoted through meditation, watching the stars, sleep in the focus or gaze with the drifty. Our I statement is I see, I visualize, I dream. When you're ready, whatever pose you're in, go ahead and lower those hips all the way down and then allow the bottoms of the feet together well actually go ahead and guide those knees back up and we're gonna give ourselves um, a restorative twist so coming all the way back up and placing our bolster in front of us And if we don't have a bolster at home, you can use some pillows. So bring your right hip in front of the bolster. So, and your knees are just sort of um, almost stacked, but beside one another. And then we're gonna turn our belly, keep our belly turned, and then start to lower all the way down. So with our head, if we turn our head away from our feet, it may feel a little more intense. If we turn our head towards our feet, it may feel a little less intense. So just turn your head both ways. There's no right or wrong. Just find the pose that feels best to you. And then just allow the body to completely sink into the pose. With each breath, feel an expansion of those side ribs. And 
So our sixth chakra, our third eye chakra, is connected to the Cherokee core value of honoring the past. So looking and learning to the past to move forward into the future. Gently placing the hands down, raising all the way up. And we're just going to switch to the other side. So whatever is easiest, you can move your bolster or your body. So moving your knees towards the other side, the opposite hip is down. First lifting up through the spine and then slowly coming all the way down. You can turn your head in either direction. Relax the shoulders. So our gift of the sixth chakra is insight, that intuition. But knowing what to do, what action, what purpose, what motive serves your life the best. And the trap can be manipulation or like a spiritual ego. And sort of thinking of it as like, oh, look how, look how enlightened I am, you know, oh, I've got this spiritual guidance, you know, that, that is a trap. Um, and then gently placing the hand down, roll it all the way up. I said, take your knees wide and your tailbone down by your heels. And you can bring the bolster to you as much as you'd like and maybe even place a blanket to the head. And then when you're ready, just start to release the head all the way down. Your head can be at center or you can alternate sides and turn it side to side. So really feel that tailbone dropping down towards the heels and feel all the space in the vertebrae. And moving to our seventh chakra, the color. Some say violet, some say white. And connected to the Cherokee core value of spirituality. Connected to the element of thought. And our ability to connect spiritually, our knowingness, and our connection to God. Gently press into the hands and roll up the spine. And we'll set up for our final pose. So you can either have a bolster long ways behind you. You can always transition out of this pose too. So I'll give you that option too. In Supta Baddha Konasana, with our heads supported and our knees apart. 
or if you feel like something more even more restful you can have the bolster underneath your knees and um the blanket underneath your head but i'll cue you for that pose um, but you always feel free to take that anytime The lo location of our crown chakra is at the top of our head. And it's connected with all of our central nervous system in our brain. So with that, those imbalances may be manifested as headaches, or mental illness. And we can promote healing by meditating, writing down inventions, praying, and even focusing on our dreams and dream interpretation or visualization. And if your legs are in Supta Baddha Konasana, gently allow them to release all the way out in front of you. And we're gonna go into our final Shavasana. So if you'd like to release the bolster, you can just place it underneath your knees or feel free to just stay just as you are. Whatever position you choose, let it be a position you feel supported in and you can find stillness. You start to bring your awareness onto your breath. Relax your arms and your feet. Adjusting yourself to where you're completely and totally comfortable. And then resist the temptation to move. Start to bring your awareness to your feet, to your legs, and imagine the color red infusing and energizing you. On your exhale, exhaling the color red and breathing in the color orange, giving you a new vitality. Bring the awareness into the hips and pelvic region. On your exhale, exhaling the color orange and breathing in the color yellow, giving you clarity and inspiration and a sense of strength. Breathing into the solar plexus region, the upper abdominal area. Breathe out the color yellow and breathe in the color green. A beautiful healing green 
that takes care of every aspect of your health. Filling your whole body. Seeing a soothing emerald green filling the entire heart region. And then as you exhale green, just breathe in a beautiful blue. This blue brings you calmness, serenity, truth, and a sense of peace. Bringing your awareness to your throat chakra. See the color blue. As you exhale blue, breathe in a beautiful lavender purple that you take deep into yourself, relaxing you, making you feel safe, and secure and protected. See the color purple in your third eye. Breathe out the color purple and breathe in a beautiful white light. A white light that infuses you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Clearing out any cobwebs or distractions in your mind that have been disturbing your clarity of purpose and your ability to be fully present. Connect with a presence and a power that is larger than you. An energy that is breathing you, that is giving you your life force. A universal energy that makes everything move and function beyond your understanding. And just for a moment, take in the miracle of life that you are. As you breathe in that power that is in you, allow yourself to be receptive and feel totally supported by this energy. Attune yourself to that. Allow yourself to receive that energy and light right now. And as you imagine your day, your life, and all the things you want to accomplish and you want to have happen, experience the sense that you are not alone that there is a mighty force and power from the divine that is with you all of the time. Ask from your heart for this power that loves you and supports you. So whenever you feel alone, scared, unsafe, overwhelmed, you can tap into the source that is giving you life right now.
Imagine what it would be like if you actually claimed that power. How strong you would feel, how courageous you would feel, how fearless you would feel. If there are any areas where you may not feel worthy of this, go there and forgive those parts. See yourself going from one thing to another, accomplishing tasks, making things happen, interacting with people, finishing your projects, having more abundance in your life, having better relationships, vital health, greater opportunities. You never walk alone. Things align and fall into place miraculously when you ask for that power, that energy. As you ground it into yourself, give thanks for this knowing and let yourself be happy to know that you are never alone. Forgive yourself for anything you may be holding against yourself, for feeling unworthy, undeserving, or that you have to prove yourself to have this happen. You don't. All it takes is your willingness to ask and assume it. Fill yourself with this love right now all throughout your body. Taking a deep breath. And exhale. And when you're ready. Gently. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Just bringing your awareness back into the room. Allow that energy of love and support to meet you in your need because it knows every need and will meet you there. And when you're ready, gently roll over onto your side into the fetal position. Knees into the chest and head resting on the hands. Just taking a moment to feel gratitude for taking time out for self care and gratitude for all that you have in life. And gently raise all the way up into any comfortable seated position, eyes closed, hands resting. We'll place our hand on our inner eyebrows and gently start to press up and away all the way into our temple. And bringing our hands into our scalp. And just massaging that area on our crown. back of our head and with our hands at heart center namaste tohi peace and thanks so much for trying something new and um 
was great to have you guys. I'm going to stop recording. Would love to have feedback.